Welcome, everyone. We are so excited to be here today. Um, my name is Anna Irving. I am the Senior Vice President and GM Memo Designer Readywear for SACS. And we're super happy to be hosting the first ever SACS Live with the one and only Sergio Hudson, um, who had an incredible show last night, bringing the magic and the excitement back to Fashion Week. So Sergio, welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> We're so excited. I mean, last night's show was fire. <laughs> um, there's so many things about the show, and we'll get into that, and we'll see the runway show a little bit in a little bit. Um, but just wanted to start to talk about you know you, and really how you came to this moment um, where you are today. Ooh, well that's a long <laughs> story. Um, you know. I tell the story all the time. I've always wanted to be a designer, mm -hmm. probably from like, and people are like, my business partner's like, you did not know you wanted to be a designer right. at three years old. And I'm like, I actually did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just an awkward person. <laughs> I think sometimes, you know, I was like four years old, literally watching CNN style yeah. and those type of programs. I knew who Johnny Versace was, right. who Adelina Laya was. Right. And these were the people that I idolized from a very, very young age. Right. And it's what I connected to. So I've been on a trajectory my entire life to be that person, yeah. to be a designer that women would want to wear. Right. And give my point of view of how I think women should dress mm -hmm. or the pieces that I think women should have in their closet. Right. No, it's absolutely amazing. There have been so many crazy moments for you, I'm sure, this past year. Um, one of the moments I wanted to touch on was, you know, how you felt when Michelle and Kamala came out in their outfits for inauguration. Well, you know what's crazy? I was, um, we dressed um, Vice President Harris for the night event mm -hmm. for um, inauguration, mm -hmm. which was supposed to be the ball. Right. But that's another long story. <laughs> The insurrection and all of that stuff. Yep. But, um, so I was actually in D.C. Mm -hmm. bringing her coat that we had to remake. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I, but we had dressed um, Mrs. Obama like yeah. a month before. Okay. So she was done. So right. I wasn't even thinking about her right. look. And then when I was leaving D.C., uh -huh. I touched down in Philadelphia yep. on the connector. Mm -hmm. And I got the text from her stylist, Meredith Hoop. Okay. And she was like, she's wearing your outfit. Be on the lookout. And I right. was like, okay. So walk up to the airport, mm -hmm. to the lounge. And she, as I walked Wait, in. you were in the airport? I was in the airport. Oh, no. And as she walked up the stairs, like mm -hmm. that moment that everybody yeah. talks about, she walked up the stairs. Uh -huh. And she cracked the door open. That's when I walked into the room. It was oh, like something wow. out of a movie for real. Yeah. And all these people were in there, like, watching, of course, the inauguration. Right. Because we were so happy. So <laughs> thrilled. We were Clearly. just so happy to watch it. <laughs> right. And um, everybody was watching it. And th it's like in the room, everybody audibly gasped. Right. Like, they were like, <gasps> and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it was like, I gasped, too, because I almost forgot. I was like, oh, my gosh, she looks so good. And yeah. I was like, oh, I made that. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, I made that. And uh -huh. it was almost immediately. Right. It was a girl next to me, and she was like, I have to see who made that. So she Googled it. Uh-huh. And, of course, my amazing PR team had was <laughs> on it. So as soon as they Googled it, it was Sergio Hudson. She was like, oh. His name is Sergio Hudson, uh -huh. and I heard. Wait, she's her. talking to you and telling no, you this. No, <laughs> she was talking to her friend next oh. to us, and I was like, okay. And I just stepped out the room because, like, if oh she googled God. a picture, then yeah. it was obviously me. Right. So at that moment, I knew things had changed. Wow. Like it was almost an immediate shift, and then the website crashed and all that stuff. But oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we all watching that felt the same way. I think when we saw her walking down the stairs. In the full Oxblood ensemble and the belt and the coat, I think all of America felt, okay, it's time to just dress up again, <laughs> right? Yes. It was so inspiring. Yeah, it was a moment. I'll never forget that for sure. And it was unexpected for me. Right. Because we had dressed Miss Obama like twice before. Uh-huh. 
And, you know, it was a great response, but I guess because that was such a huge moment, mm-hmm. and it was the right outfit in the right moment. Right. And the right event. <laughs> it was really, it was really, I think, a pivotal moment in American fashion, so it was super, super exciting. Um, and then in your show, show last night, which was, again, fantastic, <laughs> you had an amazing surprise in the beginning. <laughs> yes. Sheila A. Yes. Tell me about that. How did that come to be? Well, you know, um, Nate, my PR director, Uh we were on the phone talking about the show, like, what are we going to do? And we were like, I was thinking Sheila E. Mm -hmm. to, like, perform, or it was a couple of people that I was thinking about. I wanted a performance. Right. And I was like, it was a couple of people that I was throwing around in my head, and Sheila E. was one of them. And he was like, what do you think about Sheila E.? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, like, because the glamorous life is, like, the theme of what I'm trying to do, Mm -hmm. you know, bring glamour back. Right. Like, make it okay for women to be fabulous again. Because I feel like with American fashion sometimes, it's, like, not cool to dress up. Not cool to, Mm -hmm. you know, do the most. Right. It's not cool to wear heels. Mm -hmm. You know, not, you know, so I felt like, it's, it's cool to do this, and it's cool to want to dress up. It's okay. Right. You don't have to, you know, look groggy to <laughs> be into fashion. Yeah. So, um, it was the perfect song and the perfect, it was just the perfect everything because um, the Beyond 8 who mm-hmm. produced my show, mm-hmm. Brittany Escovito, runs it. Right. That's her aunt. No way. <laughs> She's going to kill oh, me so for telling a, everybody. There's a family connection. But this was crazy. I didn't know that. Got and I it. had already, you know, pretty much, you know, so it was it was just like the perfect. It was just natural. So she we, seemed like a natural after so many years. Oh, yeah. She still tours like literally this week. I think she had like three dates before oh she God. came to do my show. And then she has another one this weekend. Like, she's just a she's rock a star. She's like, awesome. Awesome. So we have some of the runway images, oh. <laughs> shown, which is super cool. I love this technology. Um, do you want to tell us about some of these looks? Like, I love this. Very, it's a giraffe print. Yes, it's, it's a giraffe cool. print. Um, it's just, I'm not a print person, right? but I did this print, um, and I did it in the monochromatic just because that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I think you guys have this, have this coat mm-hmm. and this jumpsuit. I'm not sure, this cat suit. But it's just that was just like a swing coat. I love. It's beautiful. It's kind of the same body as uh, Mrs. Obama's coat, but right. it has a huge collar and right. it's more relaxed. Yeah, and just a reminder to the audience: all of the styles from this collection are available in pre-order at Saks exclusively for the first two weeks, exclusively at Saks. So definitely check it out while we're talking yes. as well. Um, you know what I love about you know, many of these looks is just that long line that you create, that long monochromatic look. It's become so signature. Yeah, it's just, you know, I feel like it kind of just pulls you up and makes right. you longer and leaner. And a lot of times with, um, I love pants, so you see a lot of pants uh-huh. in, in the collection. And I have a lot of tall clients that always complain that they never can find pants in their limb. Uh-huh. So my pants are really long, right? And I feel like it accommodates for the shorter women, mm-hmm. and it accommodates for the taller women because right. if you're shorter, you can just hem them, yeah. And if you're taller, you can actually wear them, right? And I actually have, I think, two and a half inches extra in the hem. Just oh, that's so, such a great. You know. That's so smart. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say for those of you watching, I am very short, and I. I'm wearing this amazing Sergio Hudson dress, and it fits amazingly. So I think I that's think one that of your dresses, too. <laughs> yeah, we have this online. Um, well, what I wanted to say is just that how well the clothing fits a number of different sizes and a number of different um, ranges in terms of types of body, which is amazing. And then the belt. Yes, they call them the, the signature, signature belt or, like, the hero belt. Right. It's like the <laughs> oh, you definitely feel like a hero wearing that. You're like a <laughs> superwoman, which I love. I also love all the leather looks that you wear. Yeah, I'm obsessed with leather. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know what it is. It just connects to me. Mm-hmm. And then, like, even if you look at the model, like, when you just have on leather, it just, like, gives you this, you know, moment. Yeah. It's, and like I a, think it's a little extra, but still yeah, subtle when it's yeah. all black. Yeah. 
which I think is really awesome. And I think you have this leather look like on yellow. Yep, mm-hmm. you definitely have some yellow. And this dress I thought was really cool with the cutout. Yeah, I kind of like, um, you know, I'm a Hollywood designer, so right. you have <laughs> to accommodate the girls a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that was just a little nod to, like, Hollywood. And this is one of my favorite uh, this looks. This is so gorgeous. Yes, the yellow the coat. The yellow is so beautiful. It's a, and it's the sculpted coat, so it has all this great seam work. Right. Um, and the, the fabric is just so beautiful and lush. And it's I love so playing with the monochromatic, um, but in different tones. So, yeah. like, you see what this looks, this is actually this something is new for the show. Right. Uh, the cat suit. Um, in the alpaca. I think you guys have it in the sweater. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It's like, it's like a grown-up onesie. Yeah. But so glamorous. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. And then this is, um, just the, it's a, I think that's the, just the plain yellow bodysuit. Uh-huh. I think you guys have that as well. And that's a fabulous little jacket that she's wearing. How did you, you come up You guys have a lot. With? We have a lot. <laughs> it's all on sax.com. We have a lot. <laughs> Um, how did you come up with the color palette? Like you're so intentional about these amazing solid hues. Well, the I was the color palette actually came from a picture of a woman from the Mbele tribe in Africa. Oh, so that wow. was where my whole and that's where the color story came from. Even the giraffe print. So I was very inspired by Africa oh, cool. with that. But the collection started with a um, inspiration from a picture of Diane Carroll. And she was just on the sofa. Right. In all white. Wow. Yeah. And this blue is amazing. Yeah. I just, you know, and this was one of my favorite looks. And I feel like, like when she came into the casting, Mm -hmm. she didn't know if I was going to have something for her. I was like, I think I have something perfect for you. Because I do, I I, I like to dress everyone. So, I mean, and then this looked like. You guys have this top. Yes, I love this look. Um, so like just to see that look come out after that look is just showing you, you know, the range of what we try to do. Like dress everyone. That's my goal. That's that's amazing. Now one of the things oh, this I know. Right here. I know. <laughs> what was it? Um, I think the girls haven't had to walk in heels. In I was a gonna while. say. I think the shoe <laughs> thing is definitely. That is one thing that feels very new about coming to Fashion Week yeah. is wearing heels again. Yep. Yeah. But it was it crazy because some of the girls, like, it's, it was so bad to see the girl right behind her come out like it was never. I know. And then she's like, oh, I got this. She's been training in, in her bathroom. She's yeah, been, she's like, going, ready. doing the treadmill with the, with the, with the heels. Um, are there any designers that inspire – you're clearly an inspiration unto yourself, but are there any designers that – have inspired you along the years? Oh, God, so many. I'm just a lover of fashion. Um, it's never, you know, I appreciate everything from Rick Owens mm-hmm. to, you know, Gianfranco Ferre. At my, his, one of my favorites is when he was at Dior. Oh, yes, of course. Um, I, the references could go on and on, on, and, on, and, on. and on and on. But <laughs> I feel like I always, I have like, um, my favorites mm-hmm. growing up were definitely Azadine Alaya, uh-huh. um, Johnny Versace, yeah. Terry Mugler. Mm-hmm. That whole moment right. was my childhood pretty much in a, you know, and then teenage yeah. years, of course, it was Alexander McQueen right. and John Galliano and, you know, Beaton Philo yep. and all those people yeah. were great from the early 2000s. Oh, and the purple. So one of the things that's super exciting is online we have a, we're going to have an exclusive capsule of items in this beautiful purple hue, and that's arriving in October, which is super exciting. And this format that, you know, that we're working with, this business model with the see now, buy now, how did that come to be, and why did you decide to do that? Um, It was another conversation with Nate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, you know, what if we don't show the collection to the public? Because one thing I don't think people who aren't like fans of fashion realize is when the public sees Fashion Week, mm-hmm. the people who actually buy the clothes, they're like, okay, I want that dress now. Like, right. 
why can't I have it? Totally. Because yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. the, the supply chain, like, it takes months for this stuff to actually get to later. the store. Yeah. So when they see it and they can't have it, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a bummer. And then they right. see J-Lo wearing it and they're like, well, she got it. Why can't I have it? <laughs> so what we decided was, okay, we're just going to show the uh-huh. stores that are going to purchase. Right. They will decide what they think their customer will like. Mm-hmm. And then when the show happens, the customers will see what their stores are going to have for them. Right. And it won't be such a long wait for them. to, Because by the time, sometimes by the time the stuff hits the stores, mm-hmm. they're like, okay, I'm they're buying something else. I'm not thinking about it. And you have to re-promote everything. Right. And re, you know, invigorate. And re-market it. It's when already all the old. marketing is right. Oh, my God. These dresses were insane. Oh, it's Veronica. Love her. She looks amazing. <laughs> and that dress is so gorgeous. Tell me about these dresses, like the, the beading on them, the sequins. Yes, um, it's actually Austrian crystals, mm-hmm. and they were hand-applied. Wow. And I just really, like, I so wanted beautiful. to bring glamour back, and I was yeah. like, what brings glamour back besides crystals? So right. we did, like, a whole section that was just crystal gowns and cocktail dresses that was one of the most inspiring moments of the show when they came out in all these dresses they're so gorgeous but they also are comfortable and they feel effortless in a way yeah they definitely were the girls loved them Mm -hmm. and because they're at the end of the day they're knit dresses so they're comfortable and they stretch yeah and they're flattering yeah but the, the slit is amazing. It's like perfect height, all that. Yeah, it's a it's a moment. Like mm-hmm. if you walk in a room with a crystal gown on, it's like it's your moment. Right. <laughs> so this is definitely for the girl who's looking for oh, the this moment. Purple is beautiful. Oh, this was one of the crowd favorite. I heard them go up for Yeah. <laughs> I took many photos of this one, which is very cool. And she looked absolutely amazing. Yeah, she was a rock star. <laughs> so the past year and a half during COVID, you've actually been really busy. Or what else have you been doing during that sort of extra time that you've had to have be indoors? Nothing but fashion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the first couple months of right. COVID were like, of course, awful. I redecorated my whole apartment. Yeah. And then when I was done with that, I'm like, okay, Jody, what are we going to do? Right. Like, it's like time to re-strategize mm-hmm. and do some new things mm-hmm. and then we just when the people started coming back and when it's kind of like around october mm-hmm. we did a spring capsule just right. of like some more relaxed pieces mm-hmm. i wasn't really into it to be honest just okay. because it's like it's not me like i just don't do right. dress down clothes right and um, but I did it, and, you know, the, the people appreciated it, mm-hmm. and um, it did really well. But I'm just waiting for my time to, like, come back and, like, right. really be, in, be back And in I sun. think, uh, like you said, inauguration was, like, the moment, like, boom. Yeah. Let's go. Let's see what's happening now. Right. So I think people are ready for these type of clothes again, oh, even if they absolutely. still just – around the house. Even if they're wearing (laughs) it around the house, picking up their kids, um, they're doing, they're wearing, they're wearing these clothes. I'm telling you that they're going to literally fly off the shelves once we have them in the store. Um, do you shop at Saks? I do. (laughs) And what was your, is there anything that you really enjoyed buying from Saks or do you want to tell us about your first designer purchase? My first designer purchase, I was thinking about this was a pair of Versace sunglasses when uh-huh. I was in college. Uh-huh. I got like some money from somewhere and I uh-huh. went to one of the stores, I don't even remember which one, uh-huh. in Fitz Plaza in Atlanta. Yeah. And I got a pair of Versace sunglasses and I lost them. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I love shopping here. I have my shopper here is Kitchy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this came from there. I don't I'm sure. I'm just, I love fashion. Yeah. I, I like to support fashion because I feel like a lot of times people don't quite understand the work that goes into you know right making a sweater like this they don't realize how hard it is to finish a sweater like this or how you know they don't understand what it takes to put this gold on this yeah on this duplex like they don't understand Mm -hmm. so 
I feel like when you do understand, it's our responsibility to support and keep this. It's really an art form. Keep it going. Yeah. Because a lot of times people come down on people who buy luxury clothing. Right. But it's just like you collecting whatever you collect. Yeah. Like people collect what they love. And totally. I feel like we have to support. Absolutely. And just one last question before I, I think we have to go off our live Met Gala uh. on Monday. So excited that's happening, but even more excited to see what's in store for Sergio <laughs> at the Met. Anything you could share yet? I can't share anything, okay. but there might be an appearance, so just be on the lookout. <laughs> that's great. Okay, wonderful. Uh, we have a question. Sure. a great question. So the question is, are any of the pieces unisex? Um, well, I think the <laughs> it's crazy that they asked that because one of our assistants in the sales room, uh -huh. he's constantly trying on the jacket. Right. And he's like, oh, I think I look good in this. Yeah. So it's like, and then of course it's like the button up shirts and right. then the trousers are very menswear inspired. Yes. Especially the fr fly front, tr front trousers. Right. For sure. So. And the colors as well. I mean, yeah. they're, uni they're universal. Yeah, and we have a couple of clients that, you know, are non-binary that, mm -hmm. you know, wear the suiting. Right. Yeah, so it's definitely, you have to know your body and know what you wear and what you don't wear, but I'm yeah. sure the shoppers can help to okay. figure that out for Good sure. Good to know. Great. Thank uh, you. We got a lot of questions about mentioning the diversity of your models, so how did you find the most attractive models? Well... Okay, so this is it's a long story about casting, but mm -hmm. I'm I wanted to be very intentional in my casting. Right. So there were quite a few older models in my show, but I didn't want to like be performative mm -hmm. and like have the older girls like just cast older girls that look older as soon as you see right. them. I wanted to kind of seamlessly blend them in just because I feel like they're almost like a forgotten sector of um, fashion, right. like the older woman, mm -hmm. but they're the people that buy the most high fashion. Yep. It's just crazy to me that they're underrepresented. Yeah. So, you know, casting people like Veronica Webb, like right. some of the older models that were in the show. Um, and they, by the way, they all look the same age, ageless. <laughs> yes. And so. I mean, that's, you know, and that's what, that's what's crazy. Like nowadays, you can't really tell, like, yeah. you know, how old someone is just by looking at them. Absolutely. And so, it was very intentional. So uh -huh. if you saw her, you're like, oh, I think she might be a little older. She was. Right. Um, and I wanted to be, you know, everybody was asking, oh, you want to put a plus size girl in the show? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's fine if she comes in and, you know, I like her or whatever. Right. But I don't want to be performative. Right. And I want to be intentional mm -hmm. and say, okay, I want to show inclusivity right. in another way because we forget about the age thing. Yes. So that was my contribution and just I wanted beautiful girls of every skin tone mm -hmm. every ethnicity right we saw so many beautiful Asian models uh -huh. and I, I think I probably cast more Asian models than anything <laughs> but the awesome. Asian girls were just giving it in the <laughs> oh, cast and I was amazing. like oh my god like it's some Love amazing it. Asian Love models it. out there right now and you know I just want everybody to you know we're all human beings yeah so you know, you look at some of the models who are like Sudanese and they're mm -hmm. just backstage and so get it because they're just like, you know, girls. Right, like, it's right. not, they're not, they're human beings. They're 20 year old girls. Yeah. So sometimes we forget when we look at a Sudanese model with a bald head mm -hmm. and we think, oh, it's some type of, you know, alien or something. She's just a girl, right. like your daughter. Right. And that's what I wanted to convey with my casting for sure. We had a great casting day. She's, yeah, I, I think worked hard to death. <laughs> I think like the matching of the casting with the fashion and the music and the venue and you, it was <laughs> such a perfect mix. And I think that's why so many people walked away feeling so inspired and they felt like they could relate oh, and you. wanted to dress up. And so many, I would say, people of all different ages felt really comfortable wearing your fashion. So I thought you did obviously an amazing job <laughs> and <laughs> I feel you. great in this dress again available on sax.com um, for pre-order uh, 
I think definitely it would be a great duster coat in a bright color. Like, that's one of the pieces yeah. that I would invest in, like, mm-hmm. immediately before they're gone. Because, <laughs> I mean, if that's, to me, that was the, that along with the belt. Right. Because the belt is, you know, it's priced very well. So uh-huh. even, you know, if you're not a girl that likes to spend a lot, lot of money mm-hmm. on clothing, the belt is very entry level price point. I wanted to keep it like that. We fought really hard. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> to do that. And um, I just want people to be able to connect to, you know, a piece. So that along with the coat, uh-huh. which would be more of an investment, but yeah. it will last you forever because it's never going to go out of style. So I definitely love Yeah, I it. totally agree. The coat is you put it on with a pair of jeans or you do the whole ensemble yeah. and it makes such a statement. Definitely. And there will still be a lot of outdoor dining, I yes. think, this winter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you all so much for joining. Once again, thank you, Sergio, for thank coming you. to the Saks Live day after his show, exclusively at Saks. Again, the product is available live for pre-order on Saks.com. And happy Fashion Week. <laughs>